Hello and welcome to this video, which is uh, a video in place of lecture for Math 361 on September 26th, 2022. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with a summary of the Kolmogorov forward equation calculations that we've talked about, and then I will go through yet one more example. And hopefully that serves as a good example as you are working on the assignment that is coming up due this week. Okay, so the basic idea behind these systems is you've got some kind of a single reaction, uh, and then we're going to put that single reaction together into a collective phenomenon. So the first one that I talked about was a single reaction where I have some kind of thing in some state, so a square, and that square uh, either turns into something else or disappears altogether. So the examples that I'm thinking of here are, let's say, a radioactive decay of a molecule or, um, let's say, a protein degrading or being degraded in the cell or something like that. So we can either put a, a different object here or just like an empty object there. And that happens with some rate lambda and what we're implicitly assuming when we write that down is that the event time, in other words, the time it takes the, before this event happens, is exponentially distributed. And this is true for uh, a Poisson process, which means that this rate happens independent of the time of day or the time on the clock. It's just dependent on the interval of time you're looking at. So it just depends on this delta t that we're going to set to zero. Okay, so this is exponentially distributed. And a collective phenomenon that is based on this single reaction would look like this. Let's say you have a whole bunch of these squares and you're watching them and you're wondering when is the first of these squares going to disappear? So I'm going to just annotate that arrow with a lambda. Now, because there's lots of them, that rate will actually be faster than just lambda, but the arrow is annotated here with the rate of a single box decaying or um, transitioning. And so on this side, so as not to confuse it, I'm just going to leave out one, uh, but we could put just the little null sign symbol there, or if it's transitioning to something else, we can put a circle, let's say. And then this is in a whole stack of possible reactions, a whole chain of them, where every time we lose one of the boxes. And this can obviously go on until they're all gone, but it would be a finite number of states. Okay, so this is something that's called a death process. We didn't talk about this explicitly in class, but it's very similar to the one that we did, which I'm about to summarize on the next half page here. Okay, so um, but I'll give you just the, the result, and it basically follows from almost the exact same calculations. So we define this stochastic process x of t, which is a collection of random variables. For each t, x is a random variable. So this is a stochastic process. And... It's given by x of t is just the number of boxes left. So here n would be equal to 5, n equal 4, and so on. And so this stochastic process in time would look something like this, where it would be initially 5, and then at some time it would drop down to 4, and then at some time it would drop down to 3, and so on. Now these step downs, I think I have one too few in there, but you get the idea. So this is x of t. And so these step downs would be happening at exponentially distributed times. So what we did, or what we would do for this example, is we would write down the trans, the um, sorry, the state probabilities. What is the probability that the stochastic process x of t is in state n at that time t? And in order to calculate what these probably probabilities are, we write down the Kolmogorov forward equation, which we do that by 
writing an expression for Pn of t plus delta t and then rearranging that to get our derivative and an equation for the Pn of t. So we end up in, in the end here with a differential equation for each Pn of t. And generally, because we are looking at just nearest neighbors along this chain, we generally have a function uh, f of p n minus 1. So the p nth equation just depends on p n minus 1, p n, and p n plus 1. Now in some cases where we're only going in one direction, it'll only depend, for example here, it'll only depend on p n minus 1 and p n because things don't come back from the n plus 1 state to the nth state, but it's just a general statement here. And these tend to be linear functions, even for nonlinear reactions that end up having nonlinear um, mean equations, we have a linear reaction or linear expressions here. All right, and once we have those equations, even if we can't solve those equations, a convenient thing to do is to see if we can write down an ODE for the mean or the expected value, I should say, of the process. So I would write down the sum over all n. So I write this as all states. So maybe this is n going from zero to capital N or from one to capital N or from uh, one to infinity, just depending on what states are involved. And then it's n times the probability of being in state n. And that is the expected value of x of t. And when we do that, we can use the pn, we can take a, a derivative of this expression and get an equation for y's, and it turns out in this case to be y prime is equal to minus lambda times y. So we get exponentially decaying functions as the solution, and examples of this are like radioactive decay or anything else like that where a single reaction is just sort of an isolated thing and you just have uh, a single thing either turning into something else without going back or disappearing altogether. Okay, so another case that we looked at was um, something like this where you have a single, let's say, bacteria, bacterium, and it divides at some exponentially distributed time with parameter r. So again, this is exponentially distributed. And for bacterial division, this isn't a great approximation, but we'll do it anyway just to see. Um, it just it gives a too high a probability of cell division happening immediately after a previous one. Okay, so what is the collective phenomenon here? We would have, let's say, a single bacterium splitting into two at rate r, and then again, I'm gonna annotate this arrow with a single r instead of two times r, even though the rate with two of them present will be twice as much, but that'll come out in the calculation. And so then we have three here after that division and so on. So again, here we're going in a single direction, but this time we're increasing, and this is referred to as a birth process. And we have the same formalism. We can define a stochastic process, just as we did for the death process, with the Pn of t's defined the same way. And then we also get the Kolmogorov forward equations in the same way. And finally, we can write down the mean. All of these work out similarly, except that the result is we find y prime, the mean or the expected value of the stochastic process is equal to r times y. So this time we're, we're replicating instead of de dying and so the exponential is growing instead of decaying. So again, this type of, um, this type of stochastic process would be a description of let's say bacterial growth or any other phenomenon where you have uh, a single increase by a single individual or item for each exponentially distributed time of the replication event. Okay, and this is without death, no death. 
So we could write down another one, another process like this, where you have birth and death, in which case we would have to change this by having a reverse rate as well. And then we could calculate what happens in a situation like that. Um, and you can imagine that we would probably get yet again exponential growth, but the, whether it's a positive or negative would depend on whether the birth rate is slower or faster than the death rate. All right, but I won't go through that, and we didn't talk about that particular example in class, um, but you can think through that if you want. So here is another reaction I'll go through uh, that we talked about in class uh, and the rest of it. So the, the single reaction we talked about in class, and that was the case of our original square becoming a circle and our circle reverting to a square. So there's a forward rate alpha and a backward rate beta. And this is the single reaction. Again, both of these transitions uh, we're going to assume are exponentially distributed. Now, if we don't make that assumption of the exponential distribution, then it becomes trickier to write down some of the expressions that we use to get the Kolmogorov forward equation. All of those alpha delta t and beta delta t's are based on this being a Poisson process, meaning the probability of transitioning from square to circle in an interval of delta t is alpha times delta t. So if we don't have that exponential distribution, it becomes more difficult to write down the Kolmogorov, uh, yeah, the Kolmogorov forward equations. Um, in principle, such a thing would exist, but it's just not as straightforward. Okay, so um, we talked about that case there, and we actually talked in class about what the probability of being uh, in square or circle, but in the class we talked about Hulk and uh, Dr. Banner. And so what, what do we do in a collective phenomenon here? So this is the homework problem where we said we had n characters of the Hulk banner type. And here there, I'm just drawing four. And they transition at a rate alpha and backward at a rate beta. And banner, Dr. Banner, who is the square here, if he gets upset, becomes a circle. So there's one transition. And we can continue with a chain of these. In this case, there'd be four, four possible transition steps. And in the end, you would have a very probably rare occurrence of all of them being in the Hulk form. Well, I guess it depends on how upset Dr. Banners, the Dr. Banners get. Okay, so um, from this, you have been asked on the assignment to write down the Kolmogorov forward equations. So you have to write down the Pn of t equations and then use those to get the expected, uh, the expected value equation for y. And you should find, and this is, shouldn't be too much of a spoiler, um, but maybe if you didn't get this, you can figure out why you don't match this. You ought to get y prime equal alpha times n minus y minus beta times y. And this is the expected number of circles or hulks. OK, so um, the assignment isn't really just about getting that equation correct. It's about getting to it. So hopefully you can um, fill in all the steps there. And traditionally in, let's say, biochemistry or a cell biology modeling context um, or other contexts, we wouldn't really talk about the expected number of circles, or you can think of these as, let's say, proteins undergoing some kind of state transition. So a, a common example is protein phosphorylation. So the circles would be an active form of a protein and the squares an inactive form, and they transition in this way with a rate alpha and beta. And so we usually prefer to think in terms of concentrations. So we divide through by V. And you'll notice that N minus Y is actually the number of the expected number of squares. So this becomes an ODE for the concentration of circles. And I'll call, oh, I guess D is a bad letter for circle. I'd rather use C, OK? So we have a C prime is equal to alpha times d, <laughs> d for square, minus beta times c. 
And then the d equation, you can go through the exact reverse of all this and find that the d equation would be the exact same thing but negative because you're always transitioning in the opposite direction. And so this is an ODE for the concentration of squares, sorry, of circles. And this would be an ODE for the concentration of squares. And so what we're starting to see here is the idea behind how people write down ODE models of reaction schemes of this type without going through the entire stochastic process and the Komogorov forward equations. Often people will just go straight to the ODEs like this, where if the rate of some, the rate of change of some uh, thing you're studying, like a protein concentration, would be proportional to that concentration in the simplest cases. And sometimes those reaction rates would be proportional to other things if they are, let's say, switching into the form of a circle. Okay, so, um, so the examples here were the Hulk, or many Hulks, and protein phosphorylation. Okay, so um, so that's so far we have three different scenarios. We have a birth process where the rate was, you can see here, proportional to the number that were present, but with a negative in front of it. Here, the rate for a birth process was proportional to the number of um, individuals there. And we can interpret R and lambda as per capita birth and death rates. And then here we had a reaction where there was, let's say, a protein's concentration was changing at, at two different rates that add up. So there's the rate of appearance of the thing, which is proportional to the concentration of squares, and a disappearance that is much like a death process, um, where the rate is proportional to the concentration of the object itself. Okay, so let's do a slightly more complicated case. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is getting kind of long. So maybe I will stop this here and make a new video for this separate case uh, so that we can watch this in pieces.